You are listening to the Beyond the Pain podcast, where Dr. Emil Tompkins and his guest guide you through the latest techniques to relieve your pain and learn how to fuel, move, and think for lifetime wellness. Hey guys, this is Dr. Emil Tompkins from the Beyond Pain Relief podcast. I want to welcome you. Thank you so much for for joining us here today. We're committed to helping our patients, our community become healthier as healthy as we possibly can be to move ourselves beyond pain relief and into real health and wellness. And we have a special, special guest uh, today. We have Kaylin Wolf. Kaylin Wolf, at the age of 15, began her studies of the unseen world. She is encouraged by her father who intrigued her as she was growing up in metaphysics. Somewhere between seeing the deeper meaning and no meaning of life, she discovered her purpose, which is to connect with people on a deep level and allow them to see with ease their beauty and wisdom. She has studied at the side of many magnificent teachers, including her father and mother, Stuart Emery, Anthony Robbins, Marsha Martin, Ellie Drake, Lou and Francine Epstein, John Panama, and Rosalind Briere. This stellar list does not include the thousands of everyday people who have been great teachers to her, from the homeless to the affluent. At age 19, she realized her own innate healing ability and studied with many professional healers in and around the Los Angeles area and beyond. She studied sound meditation with a Tibetan meditation master in 1978, which she still uses today. And in the early 80s, she had a very successful energy healing practice in Los Angeles and had her first flotation tank experience in early 1985. When she moved to Tucson later that year, she opened Cloud9 Flotation Center, the premier flotation tank facility in Southern Arizona. Later in 1986, along with three others, she founded the Synergy Center, which included floating, a mind gym, massage, colon hydrotherapy, yoga, meditation, and dance. In 1990, she sold Cloud9 Flotation and moved to Oregon to start a family. Switching gears in 2005, she had a successful career in in corporate America. Having come full circle, she's back in Tucson, now offering her unique blend of energy-centered healing and combining it with floating. New technology and advanced features and advanced techniques make flotation tanks a resource that many can use to enhance and improve everything from sports performance to meditation practice. Members are finding better living with chronic health and anxiety issues. It provides a valuable tool for athletes, uh, spiritual adventurers, chronic pain sufferers, and people seeking an unconventional path to very conventional results. Combining regular flotation with energetic healing maximizes benefits well beyond tank time. The combination enables members to regenerate, repair, replenish, and revitalize the four R's of flotation energy therapy. Members of Cloud9 Flotation can take advantage of flotation energy therapy for the ultimate experience. She offers a combination of these two specialties for the first time anywhere from her home studio in Tucson, Arizona. So I want to take a moment and welcome Kaylin Wolf. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, this is such a pleasure, Dr. Emil. This is, I'm just having a great time. Well, I, I appreciate you being a part of this podcast, and I'm looking forward to the, the value that you bring to uh, our community of listeners um, all over the world who, who are going to want to hear and learn about uh, flotation therapy and what that means. What are some of the ad- events that led you to developing this specialty that led you into uh, creating this uh, flotation tank experience, a sensory deprivation experience? Thank you for, for that. I'm not the one who created it. Dr. John Lilly did that in 1954. I had my first flotation experience in 1985. I had a boyfriend who had a flotation tank, and I had never heard of it. I'd never seen one, um, but I'd been in energy healing for you know practically my entire life. And so when he said, do you want to get in? It's like, well, sure. So I was only 28 years old, um, and I was excited to you know do this new thing. Well, once I got into the tank, it was like, you, you know how you have that moment when you're thinking, well, this was an interesting idea. I wonder why you thought it would be good. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's how I felt the first, you know, for the first couple of minutes. But as I settled into the new environment of the tank, uh, it, it became quickly home to me. Um, it's only 10 inches of water. 
and it's completely dark and it's totally silent, except for the bodily functions that you normally make, like your heart beating and breathing and stomach gurgling and things like that. <laughs> um, and so I got to start asking myself questions. I, mean, I, I had already been a meditator and I started doing some meditation techniques, but right out, like right Right after I started, all my bad decisions came right up to me. I, it was like every bad decision I'd made in my little 28 years um, just were right in front of my face. And then all the good decisions started coming in. And then after about what I perceived to be 20 minutes, um, it, it stopped. And I was able to just, Siri, just really be in the tank without any outside influence, without anyone telling me who I am or who I should be or how I should feel, just me. That's amazing. Um, and and I imagine the, the things that you're telling me that you're noticing aren't even maybe I, some of the things that people are thinking about when they make that decision to, to experience the sensory de uh, deprivation and the flotation. Um, do, do people realize that that's part of their experience when they, when they go into that? Some do, yeah. Some come here to specifically do that. Mm -hmm. um, there is, it's been shown recently that having a quiet mind is just as important as having physical activity. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of people come here for the specific reason that they want to have that quiet. And then there's others uh, who come in for very physical reasons. You know, their back hurts. Their um, they're an athlete and they're in training and they have to have recovery is huge for them. And then after about their third or fourth session, they realize that their minds are opening up, that they're thinking of things they've never thought of before, that they're actually having thoughts, which is an unusually rare thing to have in, in today's world. It's really, really interesting how we can we can open up our minds to to some really amazing things when we just stop for a moment to, to, to listen, stop for a moment to be, to be clear and be aware and, and be open to some of those things that are going on inside. Well, that's wonderful. Do you feel, um, uh, now it's so, it's so interesting. We're seeing you all over the place. Uh, you've, you've been on the, the news. People are, are showcasing some of the things that you're doing with veterans and, and other places. And it, it's really great to see that the exposure that we're, you're now starting to get. Do you feel like there was any, was there any struggle though, before the breakthrough, before, before some of this exposure started to come out for you? Well, interestingly enough, I started in the floating business in the 1980s when it was very big. There was a movie called Altered States that came out and that movie was very popular and it turned people on to floating like in one day. I mean, everyone who saw the movie all of a sudden knew about floating. Well, flotation tanks started popping up all over the place. There was a flotation tank center here called Samadhi Your Body on Campbell in the 1970s, in the late 70s. And then they left and then I came in in the mid, eight, mid to late 80s and then I left, and about 10 years ago, there was another one that came up on the far west side um, called Stillwaters. Uh, but, it, you know, it's like it, it, there, we were few and far between. But in about 1992, all there were about five or 600 flotation tank centers across the country, and um, they were just gaining speed, and they pretty much all went out of business within a year. Uh, there was a a fear of contracting AIDS and nobody knew how that was, how it was really contracted. They didn't think it through that in a body of water, that's only, you know, 125 gallons, 800 pounds of Epsom salt is going to kill anything. There was never ever a chance of contracting any disease or any kind of infection or anything um, through a flotation tank environment. But people were afraid. And when you're afraid, you do silly things. You don't think things through. Then about 10 years ago, Joe Rogan did a podcast on floating. And the world woke up to floating again. He talked about how it was the most effective tool he'd ever used for self-discovery. Um, he used it for recovery in his MMA um, fights. 
uh, he's you know, been more and more podcasters started talking about floating and somebody opened a center and then somebody else opened a center. And, you know, about I think seven years ago, there was a fl- the first flotation conference, which happens in August um, every year in Portland, Oregon. And there was 50 people at that conference. And then the next year there was 200 people. And this year there's going to be about 700 people. And these are all people in the United States and Canada who come from all over the world. Last year they were from Australia. Today there's over 700 flotation tank centers again. And in Canada there's over 100. That's wonderful. You had answered a, a question in there as, as, as we were talking, you had answered a question that, that I was going to ask, and it was about frequently asked question or how sanitary um, those tanks are. And, and mm-hmm. with, with all of that, you'd mentioned with all of the salt, um, that pretty much means that, that there is no bacteria or microbe or, or anything that, that can survive that. So that, uh, that definitely, that definitely is a, um, uh, a very, very pure, um, and and those those tanks get get filtered and all sorts of things too. Oh, um, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, I as can well. My, so. Sure, my process is I start with reverse osmosis water. Um, mm-hmm. I don't want anybody floating in Tucson Municipal. I don't care how much salt is in there. <laughs> I just don't want that. <laughs> so I start with the reverse osmosis water, and then I put it through um, a structured water filter. Um, if you've ever read the book by Dr. Emoto about structured water and and freezing the, the molecules so they look like snowflakes or they look like blobs. It depends upon, you know, how, the influence that has been going around the water at the time. But it's a really fascinating book called mm-hmm. The Secret Message in Water. Um, so I put mine through a structured water filter and through shungite, which is a mineral that cleans water. Then I use hydrogen, 35% hydrogen peroxide in the tank. Uh, then it goes through a filtration system that starts with a microfilter, then it goes through a UV light, and then it goes through an ozonator. And that is filtered um, between three and five times in between each client. Wow. Well, that's a lot more than I ever imagined uh, there would be. So that's that's mm-hmm. amazing. Um, yeah. Now, we, we talked about... Uh, salt uh that's in the in the uh in the flotation tank but it's not the salt that that any of us really think of or what we put on our food at dinner time um it's a it's a, a magnesium compound right correct i use the top of the line pharmaceutical grade epsom salt so it's magnesium sulfate um this salt is so pure that when the uh, it, that it sparkles. I mean, it's just amazing. Um, and um, I mean, it, literally, it, it sparkles before you put water in it. Um, but when the water evaporates from it, uh, it recrystallizes. So it doesn't ever, it, it's, a, it's a solution. It's a dissolved solution in, yeah. in the water. Now, with that magnesium, um, that's definitely different than, than regular salt. So there are other, he- there are lots of health benefits to doing that. So what are some examples of some of the health benefits of this sensory deprivation inside this float tank full of magnesium? Oh my gosh, there's so much health benefits to magnesium. Just to name a few, it helps you sleep. It's a good idea to take magnesium internally before you go to bed. It really will help you sleep and it helps with restless leg syndrome or cramping. It also is great for, it it actually speeds up your metabolism. And that's how people are detoxing through the flotation tank experience is it mm-hmm. speeds metabolism, um, which means it's speeding the lactic acid, it's speeding your, your blood flow. So everything's moving out uh, of you at a faster rate, which is wonderful. It, it, it helps with cramping. And also I mean, when taken internally, um, it's good for um, indigestion and things like that. You may know a lot more about the uh, nutritional benefits of magnesium than even I know, but those are the ones I know about. Well, that's that that that's plenty. We do a, we do a lot of work with magnesium with our patients, and in our chiropractic office, we we do take care of a lot of people who are dealing with with pain, but also issues with with muscles and tightness and cramping and 
And we see patients that respond really well to very various types of magnesium. And, and you can use different types of magnesium to help people with, uh, with different things. Uh, but but you've, you've, you've hit a lot of those benefits uh, on the head. And, and if, if you don't have enough magnesium, there are a, a number of health, health challenges that people will experience, like you okay. know, issues with our kidney and our liver and issues with our bones and, and um, you know, issues during pregnancy, along with the things that you've mentioned, um, behavioral issues and mood swings and you know, sleeping difficulties, even our, our bone density is affected by by the amount of magnesium that we have. So yeah, there's there are so many, so many different benefits. So that's uh, the, that's fantastic. Sorry, in floating in the in the magnesium, you're absorbing some through your skin, but we're not sure about how much. You're definitely absorbing it through your your mucous membranes. Um, mm-hmm. And since you're floating nude, those are um, easily accessible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I know that you, when you talk about muscles and, and how it works with muscles, you know, everyone talks about floating in an Epsom salt bath and how good that is. This is like that only on steroids. The water never gets cold. The water is at 94 degrees or so, between 94 and 95 and a half degrees. So the air temperature, the water, and your skin temperature are all about the same. So your body has a you have a perception of your body of disappearing. That's why people feel like they're floating in air, they're floating in space. They're, they're, it's just there's no way to describe what happens in a float tank adequately. It it always comes up short after people get out of the tank. They're like I they're speechless sometimes. <laughs> you know, like the, yeah, you're, well that was interesting. And I yeah. always push people, like, when you say that's interesting, that's kind of a weak word, you know? <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> uh, um, but they're like, I felt like I was floating through space. I had one guy who's a veteran yeah. who came in and he said, do you have the night sky painted on your ceiling? I'm like, no. He said, are you sure? Because I was flying through the night sky. <laughs> that was all on him. <laughs> but you get very, very relaxed. And I had a massage therapist refer me to for one of her particularly difficult uh, uh, clients because she her muscles were so hard that she couldn't really get very deep without pain happening. So she sent her to me. The woman came out with like came in with a level six of pain, left with a zero pain, went straight to her massage therapist, and her massage therapist said, "Oh my God." You're like butter. Um, so wonderful. it was. She was able to do a much better job because she was able to get through that first level of relaxation, or of tension. And so this is something that that if someone is noticing that they're dealing with a lot of muscle tension and, and pain, that they should certainly um, experience. But but also as a um, as a provider, if there are um, um, any any providers, chiropractors, massage therapists, uh, naturopaths, uh, medical physicians, anyone out there who uh, has a, a patient uh, dealing with this kind of, of issue, then they should definitely experience um, or have their yeah. patients experience this as well, because it sounds like it's something uh, that will make a difference for them. So how long yeah, is the treatment? Um, it's, they started an hour. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's an actual 60 minutes. It's not a 50 minute hour. It's a 60 minute hour. Um, some people like a 90 minute um, session to begin with because the first 20 minutes your brain is sort of engaged but then you really start to relax Um, there are some float centers that only do 90 minute floats but I have people who um, are you know floating overnight now I mean it's like they really want to go in and be explorers that's amazing and so, so the, my next question was going to be because you you said it was an hour that how long could people do it? But people are people can float all night. I didn't realize that that it that you could do it for that long, um, and and still be able to do it, uh, still be able to do it safely. Is there anyone that you feel um, isn't a good candidate for floating? I did the other night, and I mean it was exhaust. I was exhausted, and at about eleven o'clock, I went into the tank, and I just didn't. I just didn't put any timer on it at all. I woke up about, and I fell asleep. I woke up about 2.30 in the morning, so I spent three and a half hours in the tank. Oh, and wow. I was so refreshed. Well, I told my mother about it. Um, 
And um, she said, what do you mean you slept in the tank? What have you turned over? I'm like, it <laughs> really takes effort to turn over in 800 pounds of Epsom salt. But even if I did, if my face hit the water, I'd wake up immediately because oh, yeah. all that salt would be disgusting. It would be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would force you awake. Is there is there a person that that potentially is not a good candidate for um, for flotation? Like, are there any contraindications or? Yeah. So if you're a diabetic and you um, don't have it, you need to be careful because when you speed up your metabolism, it throws off your your blood sugar. So it's not that you can't float. It's that you really need to make sure that your blood levels are tested before and after your float. Um, also, you need to make sure as you're a diabetic that if you have neuropathy in your feet, that you don't have any cuts or uh, contusions or anything like that in your feet. Because if you do, sometimes, you know, you won't feel them, um, but you sure will once you step in the tank. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, so, so then that leads us to um, if you have very high or very low, particularly low uh, blood pressure that's untreated, the tank will lower your blood pressure. So you want to be careful that you're, you know, you've got support around, um, around you, you know, after your session, you're going to have something salty or we're going to have, you know, we're going to do something to make sure that your blood pressure is okay. If you have cuts or scrapes, um, we have Vaseline that you can use to cover them up, and that helps, um, you know, cut the sting a little bit. But no open wounds at all. Okay. Um, and so, if you have psoriasis and you have open psoriasis, it's not a good time to float. And um, when you're menstruating, if you're a woman, you're menstruating. That's not a good time. Yeah. Is um, is is there an ideal, like the perfect ideal client? Who would you say that would be? A perfect ideal client for me would be somebody who is looking for a solution to their either their physical or emotional or performance enhanced issue. So it's somebody who is is um, really wanting to make a difference in their life in a way that's not the um, the, the the usual path. It's not the path most taken. Um, it's somebody who wants to really delve into who they are as a, you know, as a human potential. You know, that's one kind of perfect client. Another kind of perfect client is somebody who's in acute pain, um, who needs to be out of it so that their um, their other practitioners can, can work with them. Yeah. You know, I'm sure you see people every so often who um you know, who, who you just can't, you can't adjust. Um, and they need to, it would be so much help, more help where you can adjust them, but it won't last long because their, their muscles are so tight. They, it won't, the adjustment won't last. So they would be a perfect ideal client because we can get their muscles to a good place so that you can do your work. Somebody on a long-term basis who has PTSD, whether it's because they're a veteran or because of childhood trauma or because of uh, an accident, whatever they're having that's causing that post-traumatic stress, um, who wants to deal with the quiet, safe, um, swaddled almost space to be able to explore why they're having such a reaction. Yeah. That's great. Um, and one of the things that, that we'll notice in here uh, periodically, especially after a very significant trauma, someone can come in a lot of pain and there's certainly a period of time and certain things that we have to do before we can really make any real positive effect um, on their health. We have to get some of those tissues to heal, allow some of those muscles to be able to relax so that we can make really good corrective changes. So it's, it's great to know about what your service, um, what your service can provide. And it's good to know about kind of where where, where you shine the most in, in helping people with these kinds of issues, helping people with, with 
um, the post-traumatic stress and some of the um, emotional things that we can run into uh, to, to know that that sensory deprivation therapy, not only is it something that's going to, to make you feel better because your muscles are relaxing, but it's going to make you feel better because your mind's going to be clearer um, because you've, you've, you've explored maybe, maybe what's going on deeper than you ever have before um, in a way that's going to allow you to achieve that, that complete healing because a, a key for us, and, and this is why we have this Beyond Pain Relief podcast, is, is yes, we want to feel better. That's, that's vitally important. But we have to move beyond just feeling better. It's important to make sure that we take steps to be as healthy as we can possibly be, which is making sure that we're dealing with the physical stress, the things that are causing us pain, the things that are causing us not to perform well, to the chemical stress, to the emotional stress. And, and it's, so, it, it's so interesting to see how, how what it is that you do is going to help someone address that physical um, um, area, but also even the emotional stress. And there are very many things out there that, that do that. So, so I, I thank you for, um, I, I thank you for, for, for doing this, uh, with us here and, and introducing us to, to what it is that, um, that you offer, introducing us to floating, introducing us to sensory deprivation. I think it's, um, I, I think it's really special and, 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 and can't wait to, to see how things, how things grow and develop, um, uh, in, in, in your practice. So that's, that's really, um, really exciting. Oh, is there, thank you. Yeah. Is, is there anything that anything else that you feel that our our listeners um, can't live without? Like, is there any, any other bits of information that you'd like for our listeners to be able to uh, to hear about about what it is that you do? Yeah. Um, in Tucson, um, we're really fortunate because one of um, I, one of the people who I'm in a strategic partnership with is a integrative medicine um, psychiatrist and dark uh, an integrative medicine uh, psychiatrist and when what you're talking about as far as emotional you know emotions come up if something comes up in a flotation tank session that somebody feels like oh my gosh this is something I really need to deal with I can refer them to our psychiatrist who you know is fully takes insurance and all that um, and I feel really fortunate to be able to have someone like her, you know, in in our group so that people can really take advantage of that. Also, I've been doing energy healing and sound healing since 1978. So I'm very good at helping to move energy through um, on, you know, on a case by case basis. Yeah. Uh, but we have other support systems and support items here at the center anything from chakra glasses to hemp honey that help people to relax to be able to get a new point of view um you know from the one that they have that's really interesting you know it everyone sees and understands things differently. And so I have a, I have a question for you. Maybe you can uh, help me out with this and help our listeners out with this. It, when I think about the healing that, that we provide, it, it's very easy for me to wrap my head around uh, physical, um, chemical, and emotional changes and things that happen in our body that create, um, that create our health or create our poor health um, that, can, that can affect our healing. And, and I think even though I, I, I understand that our, our, our bodies and pretty much everything around us is energy, um, but, but to have a, but I, I can't say I'm to, being honest that I don't have a understanding of energy healing. So can you, can you just in, enlighten me and the, and, and our listeners on, on what energy healing is and, and what that experience is like? Sure. Um, well, we are all energy. So, um, I mean, everything is energy. Everything is field, is what Einstein said. And so, you know, the difference between, you know, the energy of you and the energy of me is, you know, our, our perceptions, of course. And I mean, we are different people. But if you look at us in, you know, through a, a, a microscope, let's say, or, you know, through something, you know, a device where you can see energy, you're going to see a bunch of energy where you are and a bunch of energy where I am, and there's going to be energy between us, 
It's just not as dense. But when we come together, our energy commingles. So there's the energy that we have within our own bodies. And, and I work with the chakra system. Chakra is a Sanskrit word that just means circle. And so it's a circle of energy. There are, they, it goes interestingly enough right at the endocrine system. So it starts, um, you know, at the, at the first chakra is at the, um, the, the perineum. And then it just keeps going up to, um, your, uh, your, your sexual organs, to your soul plexus, to your heart, your throat, your third eye, and then above to your godhead. So, this, this is an energy flow that happens within all of us. And so this is the Hindu version. There's a Chinese medicine version as well on um, the meridian system, which is oh, yes. how active countries work. They work along the meridians. So um, you know every every culture has its own version of what this is. Um, so what I look at, we all have our own patterns. We have our our um, are stuck places, you know, where we're not able to, let's say, um, express ourselves. That would be the fifth chakra, the, the throat chakra. One, two, three. Yeah, the fifth chakra. <laughs> um, so um, one of the things I might do for somebody who is having a difficult time expressing themselves, their, their, the, you know, who they are, is to have them wear blue glasses for a while. Blue is the color that um, is that correlates with the fifth chakra, the, the throat chakra. So they wear, I've seen this with children where, you know, it's like parents say, use your words and they don't know how they, it's like, it's stuck. They don't, they're not, they're not capable. So they put on blue glasses, they have their little time out and within 10 minutes they're blabbing all over the place because now that chakra has opened up because it was given the support that it needed to do. So that's an energy. So there's, you know, vibration, everything has a vibration. So there's a mm -hmm. sound vibration, a color vibration, and your energy vibration. So you just want to be able to get your vibration in a way that's balanced and flowing. And so that's where I come in, is to help that flow happen. Oh. So looking, yeah, looking, looking a lot, lot farther uh, beyond the, the, the typical, um, uh, physical manifestations, but, but definitely, definitely, a um, a lot, a lot deeper, a lot deeper than that. Yeah. Well, and I imagine you can, you can accomplish a lot and do a lot of really good things that, that, that a lot of people can't, that don't look that, uh, that don't look that deeply. That's great. If someone wants to get in contact with you and experience, uh, flotation therapy, sensory deprivation therapy, how would they do that? There's two ways to get a hold of me. One is through um, the phone. You can call me up at 520-668-4017. Or you can go to my website, which is www.floattucson.com. And um, you can you know, read up on, on all different kinds of subjects about flotation. I have lots of videos and articles and things that I've written. Um, but also you can, uh, you can book your appointment right there. You can pay online. You can, you can make your appointment. That's really awesome. So, so I'll have that phone number and that link to the website in the show notes. So, uh, for those of you who are, are in our vicinity that want to experience flotation, um, then just, uh, click on the link or call the phone number and, and pay Caitlin a visit, uh, and experience this for yourself. If you are in any other part of the world, because people all over the world listen to this podcast, is there is there a certain organization or, or group or or how would someone best find um, uh, how would someone best find this type of service in their community? Yeah, there's a wonderful website. It's www.flotationlocations.com. Ah, oh, okay. And that will give you every flotation tank center in the world. Pretty much everybody's listed with them. All right. I'll make sure that that is also in the show notes. Well, this is great. I thank you so much, so much for, for, for being a part of, of this podcast today. You have given uh, us information that, 
that that I haven't heard before, and I imagine you've given our listeners uh, information that they haven't either, so that they can uh, make make a decision on on how they would like to experience flotation therapy and um, uh, sensory deprivation therapy. That's a it's a fantastic. It sounds like a, a fantastic modality and 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 way to to heal, um, relax your muscles, clear your mind, um, and and recover recover from from more more serious health and 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 emotional issues that that so many of us deal with um so if if this is something that that you are feeling like you should experience i encourage you uh to contact kaylin um uh, to contact the um uh let's see contact float flotation locations.com uh if you're in some other other location so that you can experience flotation therapy for yourself kaylin i thank you so much for joining me today and i hope you have a good afternoon bye-bye Hey guys, it's Dr. Emil Tompkins. Many people fail to make a change in their health until things are drastic, until we've gone so far that it's so challenging to make that change, or we feel like it's almost too late, and then we're much more reluctant to make those changes in our health. This is a problem, and it needs to change. It needs to stop. When you find something that has an opportunity to make a difference in your health or in the health of someone around you, I invite you to take that opportunity to make that change for yourself or for someone you know. So I have a favor to ask of you. If you've listened to this podcast and you feel like there's something here that you think will benefit someone that you know, I invite you to share that podcast with them. There's a share link on the bottom of the screen. I want you to click that share button to share this with others. Give others the opportunity to experience the Beyond Pain Relief podcast. Um, Share that with others. Make a difference in the health of someone around you. And I thank you so much for doing that. This is Dr. Emil Tompkins. Thank you for joining us on the Beyond Pain Relief podcast. And thank you for making a difference in the lives of the people around you. Have a great day. You are listening to the Beyond the Pain podcast, where Dr. Emil Tompkins and his guests guide you through the latest techniques to relieve your pain and learn how to fuel, move, and think for lifetime wellness. 